How are you guys doing? Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Today, we're going to be looking at PlaysApp, the opportunity that we have for this project, the upcoming TGE and the token release, but also a quick summary on how this project has been doing, if it's interesting to get in now, and all of the information regarding the private sale that we're going to be hosting on our launchpad, the Digits Pad. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So PlaysApp, what is it? It is a GameFi arena where you can play a bunch of games, mostly mobile, and it is definitely targeted at a lot of mobile gamers, Web 2 and Web 3 combined. Yeah, they can interact, they can play all around the world. Definitely an interesting concept. As you can see playing on the background, you can see that the games are quite... Uh, easy it also shows that it's not necessarily highly competitive it's mostly focused on casual gamers but if you're like me you don't care too much about the actual games you care more about the token so let's go ahead and talk about the opportunity the token and the company and the team behind it so the PZP token is set to launch the 15th of March in 2023. If you do own a founding agent or an agent, you can participate in the private sale on our launch pad. Links in the description below as always. So as we can read right here, the PZP is a utility token used to power every functionality of our ecosystem. You can earn, you can trade, and you can use PZP to participate in tournaments. Now, what is interesting about this token is, of course, that there is already a lot of utility behind it because the company and the game are already established. They already have a huge player base with a lot of people playing the games consistently uh, every single day. We already have a brand that has been working on this uh, project for well over a year now during the bear market so we can definitely see that this is not some rug pull we can tell that there is a dedicated team behind this there's already a player base and now there's going to be a token release so the risk factor isn't that high because we already know that the team knows what they're doing we already know that this project has a consistent player base so it definitely seems like at least an interesting opportunity to show you guys here are the tokenomics now this is where my only uh concern comes into play overall i'm still very very positive but this is a this is a review at the end of the day so we are going to keep it real as you can see over here the seed round is going to have an eight percent tge release with only a one month cliff pretty much guaranteeing that they're going to be dropping those tokens like crazy so we might be expecting a bit of a drop on the tge side of things especially if you look over at the private sale there's only a 10 percent tge and the public only has a 15 percent tge so it's definitely not the strongest tokenomics however this is clearly designed because the token already has a bunch of utility they're trying to keep the seed investors happy while also understanding that they're probably not all going to dump their tokens because the game is already there because there's a long-term vision because the token has utility from day one so i understand the concept of course yet giving a seed round an eight percent tge is a bit tricky and we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens but ultimately at the end of the day guys um you really can't help especially in a bear market that there will be dumping on a token on the TGE. So whether you give them a, a TGE percentage or not, uh, if it's not seed round investors, it will be the public round investors as people will dump the tokens. Um, so if you want to get into plays app, you either want to uh, go in it for the long term or you want to hope that the TGE does do well. But it is questionable considering the tokenomics, not financial advice. So you guys just make your own decisions on that. I'm just saying uh, how it is now. As for the team, they're taking a 22% cut, which is uh, above average. Uh, overall, it's nothing too crazy because they do also include the advisors in it. So it's not just the team members, it's also the advisors making 22% quite uh, good. Uh, the public sale being uh, quite large compared to other projects, uh, close to 5%. Uh, game incentives, pretty much their marketing component to incentivize people to play the games at 22.85% as it is supposed to be, you know, one of the biggest aspects of a game five space. So that is all very, very normal. 7.63% on the private sale, again, slightly above average. They're definitely trying to raise funds with this token. Marketing 11%, liquidity and exchanges at 15.3 and reserves at 10% with a seed round, surprisingly as uh, one of the smallest raises with only 6.52%. Keep in mind that we're opening up the private round for you guys, which has a 10% TGE release 
clip for one month and then a linear vesting over 10 months. So a very, very short schedule for all of, uh, of the uh, categories. Also for the team, they do have a 0% TGE, but only an eight month clip. And then they start linear vesting over 24 months. Now, again, because there's already utility and the, the whole project is already so close to being done, it does make sense that there's only an eight month clip and pretty quick vesting. So I'm not even that concerned about that. Uh, of course, if the project was in its very early stages, I would have said this is garbage, but because PlayZap became uh, is already so far, already has such a consistent player base, it makes sense to release those tokens uh, as fast as they do. So, am I a complete fan of the tokenomics? No, I am not. Is it an okay tokenomics? Yeah, sure. I definitely see uh, this thing working out, especially because the token has such high utility, but make up your own mind as always. Now, let's actually shut off the main screen here and move over to the white paper to give you guys a deeper dive, a deeper view into what exactly is PlayZap and is this going to be something that you guys are interested in. Now, it is uh, uh, supported by KuCoin Labs. So that means it's also going to be listed on KuCoin and uh, stuff like that, or at least I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that, actually. But I assume if, <laughs> if you get incubated by KuCoin, you also uh, get listed there. So there's a bunch of stuff here that we really want to check out. The first one, of course, being the team. So we have here a list of everybody. Uh, the team is doxxed. So they have LinkedIn's, right? You can check it right here. This is the CEO. And over here, we have the COO. And then let's also have a quick look at the business lead. And then we have a bunch of other people here, all of them doxxed. So that is, of course, a big positive there. Uh, let's move over here and see um, the, the, let's see, this is the business. Let's actually move to the, the what is the CEO, right? Yeah. CEO, so he's based in Barcelona, uh, Abhishek Buchovani, uh, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, as you can see here, he had a bunch of experience, quite a bit of experience here in the mobile industry, uh, working for VP Games and being the founder of Piper Play, um, senior manager at Miniclip, uh, publishing division at managed large portfolio games. So definitely a gaming portfolio stretching back to at least 2014. Uh, oh, no, all the way to 2012 as product head of the mobile uh, games here at Apostec. Uh, product manager, uh, game studio. Wow, so this is definitely some elite experience here. Uh, I think 2010 is when uh, he started getting into gaming in particular. Um, that's not entirely true though here at Gameloft already 2006 in India. So definitely uh, well over a decade of experience in the gaming industry. I don't necessarily see any prior experience in the Web3 play space, but considering that PlayZap was started in June of 2021, that of course the bull run, uh, uh, last bull run, he's already been working on this project for a year and nine months. Uh, in that time, of course, huge, huge uh, Web3 experience could have been uh, obtained. So at this stage, we would uh, argue that he has uh, close to two years of Web3 experience, at least with well over a decade of experience in mobile gaming. So we're definitely looking at a team that knows what they're doing. Here we have the CCO Tasada. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, guys, I'm trying. Um, he uh, worked for three years and seven months at PlayStation, which doesn't make a lot of sense because if the CEO only works there for one and a half year, how does he work here for three years and seven months? So I'm not quite sure how that worked out. Uh, but as you can see, they both uh, co-founded uh, Piper Play. So they already have worked together. So they already kind of know their workflows and all of that, which is, of course, a huge sign that the team uh, knows how to work together, which is very important. Also, he has some extensive uh, experience dating back before 2010. So also uh, bringing a decade of experience to the table. So let's see here. They have close to 40K followers. Uh, it's a pin tweet. So they post very regularly. This was today. This was yesterday. Uh, okay. So they post approximately once a day. As you can see, their designs are pretty good looking. They definitely know how to write a good tweet. Their engagement is solid. Lots of retweets good interaction, large exposure, especially considering that they're racking up these numbers every single day. And yeah, just very active overall. The community also seems to be interactive and appreciative of what they're doing. So social sentiment overall is looking pretty solid. Again, also, it doesn't look like they're very botted because they have so much interaction. So then 40,000 followers uh, would be pretty 
uh, sick. Even more information over here. I'm not going to go too in depth on everything. You can read here the investors and the partners and a bunch of other stuff. I did wanted to zoom in on this for a bit. Uh, of course, they have been uh, partnered with Qcoin Labs, Incubates and Invests. Okay, so it was incubation and investment. I'm not quite sure about listing because of course this is Qcoin Labs, not their exchange. So we'll have to see about that. I'm pretty sure they'll be listed there. Yes, because regular Qcoin is also there. Yeah, what else? Poker Bridge Ventures, Synapse Network. So these are some of the VCs, DWF uh, Labs. So the funding certainly is there. I mean, Synapse and Poker Bridge Ventures are definitely some more of the elite uh, VCs. Um, so yeah, some good VCs. Qcoin, obviously not the uh, the number one choice. It's not uh, Binance, um, but uh, it, it, it's there. And as they can, as you can see, 25 plus VCs, early believers, uh, yeah, looking pretty good. So that's pretty much it for the most part. I would say, you guys, let's look one more time at the actual opportunity that we are offering our digits agents and digits founding agents. We're going to be able to invest into the private round, which is going to be 10 cents per token. Our ticket size will be 20K with an administrative fee of 10%. The funds will be in USDC and BUSD. And the TGE on Qcoin is the 15th of March of 2023. So... Yeah, you guys, uh, here's even some more information that would be interesting. If the interest task gets pushed through, we'll have an AMA with the team on Monday, the 27th of February, opening the digits path the day later on the 28th and closing it again on Friday. So we open for half a week. So if you guys are interested, please make sure to let us know. Participate in the interest test if you do own an agent. If you do not have an agent, please follow the steps in the description over to OpenSea. You can get one, you can stake it, and you can participate in PlaysUp and the other opportunities that we bring to the digits pad. Uh, that was pretty much it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. All right, ciao, ciao.